talking Barbenheimer on this episode of the Movies Past and Present Podcast. Hello and welcome to the Movies Past and Present Podcast. It's July 23rd, 2023, and this is episode 110. I'm your host, Stanford Clark, and I'm podcasting from the crossroads of the West in beautiful Salt Lake City, Utah. Just like my blog, moviespastandpresent.com, I'll be providing recommendations, commentary, and reviews about current and classic cinema. Thanks for tuning in, and let's do this thing. I just wanted to put up a quick podcast to report on Barbenheimer Weekend. Uh, as you know, Barbenheimer is this online uh, phenomenon uh, referencing the fact that the Barbie movie and the Oppenheimer movie were released in theaters on the same day, July 21st, and that uh, everybody is encouraged to go see both films. Um, while it certainly picked up steam in the last few weeks, the actual origins of this date back way to April of last year when Warner Brothers Pictures announced that their upcoming Barbie movie would be released on July 21st, uh, that which has been the same, you know, the same date of Oppenheimer since it started its marketing campaign over a year ago as well. So from there, uh, there's been all this fan art and custom t-shirts and poster mashups and just a lot of really fun stuff um, that have been created and spread out all over social media. Even uh, the actors in the production folks uh, involved with both films have acknowledged Barbenheimer is a thing. Um, we had our own Barbenheimer weekend. Uh, while I didn't see the movies on the same day, which uh, was on Friday, uh, July 21st, I got to see Oppenheimer earlier in the week, and then I saw Barbie on Saturday, uh, July 22nd. So uh, that's been that's been really fun. So now about specifically about the movies. So uh, these are both like these movies could not be more opposite from each other. Um, I guess that was part of the the, the appeal, maybe part of the humor <laughs> about it all. But I got to tell you, these also are both two very smart movies and unusual summer fare, and that's really a good thing. Uh, Oppenheimer is from Universal Pictures. It's written and directed by Christopher Nolan. Uh, Christopher Nolan based this movie on a book called American Prometheus, The Triumph and Tragedy of J. Robert Oppenheimer, which was published in 2006. It's written by Kai Bird and Martin J. Sherwin. And Oppenheimer is just basically a uh, three-hour treatise on, on uh, J. Robert Oppenheimer, you get a little bit, you learn a little bit about some of his educational background and experiences. And uh, a big chunk of the movie is devoted to the Manhattan Project, which Opp Oppenheimer was in charge of, which was the creation of the atomic bomb, uh, which was, uh, you know, uh, which they landed or they sent to Japan. They bombed Japan with it in. Um, which, which caused the end of World War II in 1945. And then some different stuff, about, some, some different intrigue going on in uh, Oppenheimer's life after World War II uh, with, with uh, some of his security clever, clearance uh, drama and government work that, that, he, was, that he was doing. So uh, Oppenheimer really basically is a three-hour... Uh, very stylish and interesting history lesson. And, and really that's what it is. You know, uh, it, it is very thought provoking and really ex it's just an excellent film, wonderfully crafted, terrific acting, you know, just kind of and everything, everything is really good. The technical aspects are also very good. I'm happy to report the soundtrack is terrific on this in that both the music and the dialogue are 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 understandable and they don't kill you like in his like Christopher Nolan did to us last time in the film Tenet which I thought had 
absolutely terrible sound and an unintelligible soundtrack and it just it was just a torturous experience this was not um if i were to have any kind of complaint about Oppenheimer, it probably would be its length uh not that i was ever bored or or anything like that but it's just i mean it's really long this is a lot of material i know that they're trying to cover and and uh they did they did i thought a very good job with this with with telling the story but it is long so you know be that be that it is uh, as it may uh as i mentioned the performances are very good cillian murphy really carries the film as as j robert oppenheimer um emily blunt plays oppenheimer's wife kitty matt damon plays uh the u.s uh army general who's in charge of of the Manhattan Project. Uh, Robert Downey Jr. plays the government, uh, the US government dude, Louis Strauss, who we learn a lot more about. And then just the rest of the supporting cast is just very, you know, they're very good. Uh, this film follows a, a, a narrative that's not told in chronological order, which again, is kind of a classic thing with, with uh, Christopher Nolan. But I thought that that, you know, he handled that well. That made it interesting and and and, and more compelling. Uh, and I learned a lot. Uh, you know, I knew that Oppenheimer, of course, was an, over the Manhattan Project, but there was just the stuff about his life and and his, uh, you know, that I didn't know. Um, he uh, uh, he had an extramarital affair, which they highlight in this, which um, also is where I think it earns its R rating. Uh, because there's some nudity in there, uh, which honestly is just so unnecessary. It's, I mean, if you, if, if that's, if they decided they just wanted an R rating because they just wanted to attract a more adult crowd to this film, um, I guess, you know, they have their reasons, but, uh, to me it was just, it was stupid and it didn't, it honestly didn't add one thing, uh, to, to, you know, to the story, or to the character development or anything. Um, so anyway, just, you know, word of the wise, that's why it got its, its and then I think, you know, some, some language too, but um, thankfully we don't have to see uh, the bomb dropped in Japan. And although, you know, that might help to make it more, more, more thought provoking and also just to uh, maybe get a little understand, more understanding of the horror. But I thought that the way, that Christopher Nolan depicted this was was artistic and it was excellent. So uh, this this is I think Oppenheimer is a very good film. Uh, it's do I think it's the best film ever made? No. Uh, it's just it's it's a compelling biopic and an interesting look into this important history uh, you know of the United States as well as just a very interesting character. Um, I want to, I want to read this book, you know, this, uh, um, American Prometheus book upon which this film is, is based. So I'll, I'll have a link to the, to the book, uh, on, on, uh, Amazon to amazon.com too. So, uh, Oppenheimer, uh, highly recommended and pack a lunch cause it's super long. So next up is Barbie. And to talk about something completely different, uh, this is a comedy from Warner Brothers Pictures, written uh, or co-written, and then also directed by Greta Gerwig. And um, an interesting note about Barbie, and this is this is addressed somewhat in the film, but Barbie was uh, created by a woman named Ruth Handler. Um, Ruth Handler uh, died in two thousand two, but. But Ruth and her husband Elliot were the founders of of the Mattel toy company, and uh, Ruth named um, Barbie after their daughter Barbara. Uh, also, which is funny that so Ruth and her husband Elliot had two children. They had Barbara, and they also had a son whose name was Ken. And so, so when the Ken doll came out a couple years after Barbie. Um, uh, they named him after after their son Ken. Uh, Barbie herself made her big debut at the American Toy Fair in New York City in 1959, 
or she was an instant, instant success. And, you know, the rest is history. Um, but Barbie is, is a hugely popular, popular toy and an instantly identifiable kind of icon or, you know, thing in our, in, 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 in popular, in popular culture for sure. Um, what Greta Gerwig did though is so this movie is actually made in conjunction with Mattel, who's trying to get now into the movie business. Greta Gerwig really, um, I think, delivered a, a, a incredibly solid and smart movie. This is something that could have gone in so many different directions, and it could have been so dumb. Uh, or so uninteresting, or so just targeted to you know a certain audience, but instead I thought she made a very widely appealing film that really hits some big issues, particularly I think with with the distinctions between men and women, but also uh, one that's just incredibly funny, and I think that a lot of people are really going to to enjoy. So. Um, kudos to Greta Gerwig and her team for, for that. Um, one of the things that really, of course, stands out with Barbie is its production design. You've probably seen the trailers. There's more shades of pink than you can even believe existed. <laughs> uh, and they've created this very, uh, fun and appealing, uh, Barbie world, um, uh, Margot Robbie is terrific as the title character, um, but also as you'll discover, or maybe again if you've seen with with some of the trailers, is that for the most part, all the adult, all the women in the film, they're named Barbie, and I and I believe that's how they are making the toys these days. Is that all? There's not necessarily different characters that you know with that have different characteristics they're just every female is barbie and every male is ken so that's what's reflected in this movie too ryan gosling plays the kind of the primary ken that we are talking about um but this film has Issa ray who plays you know barbie <laughs> kate mckinnon plays barbie uh you know and then and many others there's um and then uh in addition to Ryan Gosling, um, there's uh, Simu Liu plays Ken, uh, Kingsley uh, Benadir plays Ken. <laughs> it just goes anyway. It goes on and on, um, and it's just it's it's is so funny. Uh, I just was so I was so impressed with the script, and so impressed with with uh, just a really intelligent. A uh, clever way to talk about, uh, you know, again, differences between between uh, men and women, and also, uh, you know, probably just a lot of of uh, of the female experience. And so, of course, that's not something that I can't speak to firsthand. Uh, but I hope I can appreciate and respect it. And uh, I know that I enjoyed the film tremendously and would highly recommend it. So, so again, Barbenheimer Weekend, uh, what a treat. You know, if we could have movies like this every summer, wouldn't that be something? Rather than just kind of this mediocre, brainless stuff, like, you know, first the ones that come to mind is, is you know, Fast X. Um or if we get an Oppenheimer and Barbie, um, you know, uh, that would be great. And just from what I can see, too, both of these films are getting rewarded big time at the box office. And, and as I said, I think there's lots of people who are going out to the movies this weekend and I th hopefully having a great time uh, on Barbenheimer weekend. Well, that does it for this episode of the Movies Past and Present Podcast. 
Again, links and more information about the movies discussed in today's podcast can be found in the podcast notes on my website at moviespastandpresent.com. Subscribe to the podcast where you listen to podcasts and follow me on threads. I'm at Stanford Clark. As always, I hope you will enjoy some good movies this week, whether they be from the past or the present. Thanks again for listening. And until next time, be safe out there and dedicate yourself to the truth. Thank you.